Now, the Bible talks about the treasures of our heart. Now, what we need to store up things that are good. And we need to store it not only in our minds, but in our hearts. Amen. Things that happen that are precious. And forget the things that are bad. We don't store them up. We put them aside. We release forgiveness. We, we speak God's word. We do whatever we have to. We don't think about it. We just release forgiveness. But the things that are good, count your blessings. Amen. Magnify the Lord and magnify what the Lord does. The, those are beautiful treasures to store up in our hearts. And if you think that your memory is not that good, I, I advise you to write it down. Amen. But that is a lie also from the devil because your memory is very good. And like Pastor Steve says, you will remember who owes you five pounds from years ago. So you remember things. The things that we want to remember, we remember. Amen. So we, we want to remember things. When the Lord began to speak, when I began first to hear God's voice, in my heart i was so excited and so i began to write it because i discovered if i didn't write it i will forget so i thought this is so precious i don't want to forget so i've got a little note uh, note in in my notebook when i've got the little precious gems that the lord has given in my life and has spoken to me personally and all of them just to say how do you know it's god because all of them are actually verses from the Bible. You know, it's not a, a thought or my opinion or an idea. It's actually verses. When he, he says verses that I already knew, but at that moment when he spoke to me, it was revelation about it. It was so amazing. Uh, and I understood it so clear. And then I thought, why didn't I understand it before? Uh, because that's God read my word. Amen. Amen. So let's fill up our hearts with good treasures. And yesterday I spoke a little bit to the women about if we want to uh, uh, love our husband and our relationship to be beautiful, then treasure the beautiful things that happen with your husband. The beautiful moments. Put it in a special treasure box of marriage. Amen. Amen. And when things are difficult... Uh, well, you got the treasure there to go to. Amen. And then with the children, in every area of your life, and in, our, in our spiritual life, again, with the Lord. When tough, uh, uh, times are tough, when there is doubt, when things are not going your way, and you've been praying, and you this, you can get really discouraged if it wasn't that we go to the treasures that God has done in our past, the testimonies, the miracles, and counting the blessings, and saying, oh, wow, you know, the, the, the uh, darkest time when the enemy wanted to put me down, because that's his intention. The, the, the devil came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus came to give life, and life more abundantly. So if you feel that your life is being destroyed, uh, you know, all those things, it's not from God, it is from the enemy. So, But Jesus came to give us life. So I'm going to think about what Jesus wants me to think about, not what the devil wants me to think about. Amen. So I began uh, when, when the devil is telling me, uh, was telling me, you are useless, you can't do it, look at you and your accent, you're from another place and this and you got too many things and squashing me with inferiority, with rejection, with depression, with so many other ugly things. And I was, I was allowing him to squash me. Thank God for the Holy Spirit that rose up within me and began to show me the treasures that I have stored in my heart. The moment, the visions, the things, the prophecies, the words, the prayers, the sacrifices uh, as unto the Lord that I began to do. And I realized, hey, wait a minute. 
God didn't do that to me. God didn't bring me from all the way from Argentina in the middle of a town that nobody knows yet what it is to a poor, poor family that sometimes we didn't ever have money for food or shoes. He didn't do that for nothing. He didn't join me to a man of God. He chose him from New Zealand, showed the map of, of, of England and the flames of fires on it, and joined us together and took me out from a very anointed ministry that was thousands of people being saved. Miracles was happening. Amazing. And I was being trained under that. He didn't join us together for nothing for nothing just because in 15 years time it seems like haven't seen the things that i expected it doesn't mean god didn't do it for nothing so no i understood that day that was a lie of the enemy and with the authority of christ and his word i stood up and i said to i said to that day no more I'm going to believe your lies of inferiority, rejection, and all the other things. I am a woman of God. I have been called by God. I am going to do everything God called me to do. In Jesus' name. And it's not in my strength. It's in the power of the Holy Spirit. One day, the, the, the favorite one is, but you can't do it. Of course, I know I can't do it. It's not in my power. It's in his power. It is his authority. And that's why God chooses people that seems useless. Because they know it's not up to them. It's up to the Lord. It's his power, his grace. I am to fill up the treasure, stop dwelling in things which are negative, which are bad, bad treasures. Clean out that treasure box and begin to store up things, miracles, breakthrough. Take, it ti- take time and to, to, to write down all the things and say, Holy Spirit, bring to memory all the things you have done in my life. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We have the anointing to proclaim. We need to begin to proclaim God's word. Amen. Know what the doctor says. Last night I heard a beautiful testimony. I don't know if you know, uh, Marcos Brunet is a Brazilian worship leader. Very powerful, moving in South America uh, with worship. I, I never met the, his wife. I've never seen his wife. But I suddenly, yesterday, found a video of a testimony of his wife. And so I thought, oh, great. She's, he's from Brazil, but she's from my city, Córdoba. And she stood up and began to say her testimony that she was diagnosed. They are young. They are in, I don't know if they are even 30s. I'm not sure. Um, uh, she was diagnosed, uh, maybe early 30s, with cancer in the womb. And that uh, she needed an a operation immediately. Of course, she was devastated with the news. And, and that will means that she will be sterile. And they're still young. And so she went to the husband and to- talked to them. And talked to the pastors only. So only the four of them knew the diagnosis, nobody else. Because she says, I did not want anybody else to know and begin to say, oh, she had cancer. Oh, wow. Yeah, let's pray about it, but oh, cancer. You see? So the four of them began to pray. And ask, and she, she said first, she went and said, Lord, the doctors say this, but what do you say? The word, doctors want to make me sterile, but what do you say? And the Lord says, I want to make you fruitful. Amen. Okay, Lord, I'm going to stand with your word. I'm going to pray. And for a whole month, every single day, the doctor was calling her. Come on, you need to have the operation. You know these things that spread so quickly. Da-da-da. And she was saying, no, I'm waiting on the Lord, and I'm waiting on his word. Amen. And after a month... They went to another doctor, which they did all the tests from head to foot, everything that needed to be done. And the doctor said, 
I don't know what the other doctors found in you because absolutely, you don't have absolutely nothing wrong with you. Yeah. There is only one little minor thing, very tiny thing that, but it absolutely healed because they believe what God said and not the diagnosis of the doctors. Amen. So when the things are thrown into our faces, this is the moment to stand up and say, I'm going to do what God says. I'm proclaiming God's word. Amen. Amen. L- let's read Luke chapter 4, verses 18 to 19. You know this verse, right? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. These are the words of Jesus when he began his ministry. What did he do when he began his ministry? He went to the synagogue. The books were given to him purposely. was ordained that way. Because he needed to proclaim something. He needed to declare something. He stood up and opened in Isaiah and read, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. There's twice there proclamations while he's doing a proclamation to proclaim liberty to the captives and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Can you see? He proclaimed the word. He believed it. Then he acted upon it because that's when he began his ministry and began to preach and heal everybody. He was proclaiming, this is the time, this is what I'm doing. Amen. Pastor Steve also said yesterday that a man without a plan is going to fail. You have to plan. What plan do you have for your marriage? If you have no plans for your marriage, then you are just going to let it be. And that it may be bad. You have to to plan it. I'm going to spend time with my husband. I'm going to spend time with my wife. And we're going to this and do. And do things for your marriage. To invest in something that is important. What's your plan as I, in your Christian life? What's your plan with your children? What are the plans that we have? We're not planning anything out of... Uh, you know, those proud people that plan everything and go everything plan and organize. No, we do it in the fear of the Lord according to God's word. But we still have to have an idea and plan what we're going to do. Amen. Amen. Do you plan your day before uh, you, when you go to bed? Do you know what you're going to do the next day? Yes. Who doesn't know what they're going to do the next day and they just go to bed? Because there are people who don't know. There are people that maybe retire. They say, like, oh, well, whatever it will be, will be. <laughs> whatever happened tomorrow. But they always somehow have a plan. When I'm going to eat, when I'm going to go. There's always a plan. Why? Because it's necessary. So what is your plan in your spiritual growth in Christ? Your intimacy with Christ. What is your plan? Oh, well, I just go to church every Sunday and let the, the God do whatever he wants to do. We have to have a plan. I, if I want to grow in God, I have to have a plan of growing how I'm going to grow. When I'm going to go to the Bible studies, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen to the word of God. I'm going to pray more. I'm going to meditate in God's word. Amen. Is this good? That's what we need to do. What is the plan that we have to grow? If I'm not going to, if I don't have any plan, I never used to like that, those people who used to organize it. But in essence, we do is so important. Otherwise, we're going to be away, you know, whatever comes, 
No, we have to be steady. We have to be planted in Christ. We have to be, we have to be persuaded that nothing shall be able to separate me from the love of Christ. Do you want to start detailing all the things that he puts in there? Distress, death, nakedness, all the stuff, angels, principalities. He planned to stand in Christ even though all those things will come in his life. Amen. Shall I, t shall I tell you a joke? So I don't have one. <laughs> I don't have any joke, but you look so serious. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Proclamation. What is a proclamation? A public of official announcement. A pa now that's important. A public announcement why public it's not just thinking it in your head like what i was saying in the beginning we have to say it and you have to act on it and say it publicly if you are a christian and you haven't told anyone that now you are born again christian you're gonna fail as a christian because you haven't proclaimed, like Jesus proclaimed, that now the Spirit of God is upon me. Amen. Amen. Right. Yet there's a lot of people, which we know the story from Pastor Steve and Reinhard Bonke, they are submarine Christians who keep it a secret. The Sundays are super spiritual, but during the week nobody knows they're Christians. Nobody in school, and university, in the jobs, in the gym, nobody knows they are actually Christians. All those people who know you, do they know you are a Christian? Oh, yeah. Everywhere you go, the little shop, everywhere you go, do they know you are a Christian? Because we are to proclaim the good news. And if they go to, go to somebody, how many testimonies I've heard of people that had become Christians, but I didn't know what, but they remember, oh, that person, he's a Christian. I'm gonna go and talk to that person. But if they don't know you are a Christian, how can they talk to you? The probably people next to you wanting to be saved and don't know who to talk to. Oh, thank you, Lord. It's a public official announcement dealing with a matter of great importance. This is what the dictionary says about proclamation. A clear declaration of something. Decree is an order, it's an edict, a command, a rule, declaration, a statement. Hmm. Decrees are the language of whom? Kings. Kings. If you put the uh, proclamation, uh, decrees, proclamation, the same word, synonymous, and king, all the, all the kings, kings, king, and the king, I know because I did it last night. I look proclamation <laughs> and decree, and also all the kings were, and the queen, and da, da, da. So proclamation is the language of kings. But Generally, the one who, who did the, the, um, the message in, in the olden time was the heralds. They were the one who went and decree what the king has said. Guess who you and me are? Heralds. We're ambassadors of Christ. We represent the king. He has decreed here. We need to stand up. And proclaim it. Psalm 2 verse 7. I will declare the decree of the Lord. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me. You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Who was saying that? Who was saying that? Jesus. 
I will declare the decree. Yes, it's in a sound, but of course it's the prophecy of Jesus saying this. I will declare. The Lord has said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Who is the uh, only begotten son? Jesus. Jesus, who gave. Praise the Lord. So the decree. Now, through Jesus Christ, we are sons and daughters. Amen. Then today, I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, you are my daughter. Today, I have begotten you. I need to declare, I need to decree that I am a daughter of the living God. You not only need to decree it and tell your friends, but you also need to declare and decree and proclaim to the principalities. Amen. Or they will mess with you around. But when you stand up in the authority of God said, you don't mess with me. God messes with you. I'm not going to mess with you. But you don't mess with me because I am a daughter of the living God. I have the favor of God in my life. All the other people may go through things. But I don't have to because I have the favor of God in my life. All the other people have to work Sundays. But I don't for some reason because I know it's the favor of God in my life. All the other people in times of, of financial things are, are in lack. But I don't because somehow God supplies every need. And the more I give, the more he gives me because I have the favor of God in my life. And in any area of your life, well, all the other children are going, they're going bad. They're going to this cause and this and that. Uh, or my children, I fear for my children and they go bad. No, my children belong to the Lord. We are children of the most high God. He has promised me as a mother that he will keep and protect my children. And I have given them to the Lord. And I declare and I decree that all my house, we will serve the Lord. And I decree so much that I put a big sticker in my home to say, the, me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Wow, thank you, Lord. Jesus is the highest priest of our confession. Hebrews Chapter 3, verse 1. What is the confession that we are doing? What's the proclamation? The decree that we are doing? When was the last time you decree something? And what did you decree? What did you decree? Have, some people have decreed, well, I will never trust anymore. Some women have decreed, I will never trust any man again. They're all the same. That's a proclamation. That's a decree. But you need to break it in the name of Jesus. And some of the women are married. Break it in the name of Jesus and now begin to decree and proclaim what God wants you to say. I bless my husband and I pray for all men to be godly men. Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. Are you partaker of the heavenly calling? Are you? Who is called? We, are, we got a calling. Each one of us have a calling. Are you a partaker? Consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Jesus Christ. He is the high priest of our confession. When we confess... God's word, he's the high priest, he intervenes. But if you don't confess, it's nothing he can do. See, he is the high priest of our confession. What are you confessing? Worst of all, when we confess bad stuff, then we allow bad influence of evil spirits. Whatever confession you say, what are you going to choose to do? Are you going to choose the confession, proclamation of God's word? 
Or are you going to choose and proclaim the negative and how you feel? I, 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 Lord, help me. Give me grace. Help me, Lord. I want to confess your word. Amen. Have you known people that there are these people who like to talk a lot? And they don't think much what they say. It just bursts out. They're lovely people, aren't they? When they say nice things. But sometimes they don't say nothing. And they deal with stuff by speaking. They tell everybody. If they keep it inside, they can't live with themselves until they have told somebody. You know people like that? They can't keep secrets. They have to tell somebody. They're like inside bursting like, I have to tell somebody. So they go to the hairdresser and tell the hairdresser or whatever. <laughs> Do you know anyone like that? No. I'm, I'm one. <laughs> I know one very dear to me. And it's not the one you, th you are thinking of. Because it's actually a she. And it's very dear to me. And gets all these things and all the things that experience it and gets it here and tries her best to deal with it. But at some point, uh, I just have to. The word in Spanish is desahogar. I don't know how it's in English. Sorry? Desahogar. He just, she just, just has to get it out. And um, looks after this uh, this person who, with dementia and Alzheimer's, and the poor person doesn't um, it's not there. Uh, but this this woman uh, that's great for her, because even though the person doesn't understand anything, um, the one that she looks after, then she's able to desahogar. <laughs> And tells tells that poor person there. Yes, because he's alone. And then oh, I feel better. <laughs> Lord help us. You know who is the person we need to go to do that? Jesus. And what do we say to him? The intention of all of that is to get attention for me. It's for somebody to tell me, you poor little thing. And the root of that is selfishness. That somebody has compassion of you. That somebody listens to you. That somebody agrees with you. And when you have a disagreement with somebody, well, you have to tell somebody else that can agree with you. Because it cannot be that you're the only one thinking this way. It must be somebody. And you know what? You will find people who agree with you. You will find. Because what you seek, you will find. <laughs> but if that person, which calls herself a Christian, stops doing that, stops giving time to that confession, and begins to say, I am so exhausted and so tired. But Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And if every bad feeling and every bad thought that comes to you, you begin to counteract it and confess it with faith and proclaim what the king says, then not only you will change your confession, the circumstances will change, you will change, because when you give the word, it will never come back void. Let's read that. Where is that? Isaiah 55, verse 10 and 11. Isaiah 
before us. The rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but waters the earth and make it bring forth and bad. Always the Lord relates things to us in the natural to understand. And do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bad, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. 11. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. This is God's mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I send it. He already sent his word. All we do as heralds, ambassadors, we confess it. We agree. We align ourselves. We position ourselves to what he's saying. Because it's already done. Amen. Amen. Now read with me, let me find this, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we having died to sins might live for righteousness. 24, verse 24. By whose stripes you were healed. Can you see there? It's the past. It's not present. It's not future. It's the past. By whose stripes you were healed. It's already done. It's already done. We are already healed. Spirit, soul, and body. Because he already sent the word by his stripes. It, was, it, it is done. Amen. What you do is you align yourself to what he's saying. Begin to confess it. Not like a parrot. But believe in it in faith. A parrot if it's necessary. Until I believe it. Amen. When the word of the Lord came to me. And he spoke to me about to die to myself. You know my testimony die to yourself when I thought he would say to me but you have done such wonderful things I love you you are, don't tell anyone but you're my favorite daughter <laughs> and I got a big crown for you waiting in heaven I know this life is tough just be strong a little bit more and I'm waiting for you my daughter he didn't say that he said die to yourself What, what, what did you say? <laughs> Gosh, his word pierced my heart. Die to myself. I found Galatians 2.20, which makes sense with what he said to me. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. That verse is so powerful. Not only he loved me, he gave himself for me. He loved me and he gave himself for me. But I need to be crucified with Christ. When you repent, when you come to Christ and you repent, you are crucified with Christ. Your sins crucify with Christ. Then now, the new life in Christ, it is, I'm not the boss of my life. I don't do what I want. He, I do what he says. I no longer live. Amen. Amen. The life that I live is by faith in the Son of God. Beautiful. And I said this so many times. 
I said it, I shouted it, I cry, I pray over it, and I just keep saying it to myself, and I keep saying it to myself, and I keep saying it to myself, until it came to pass, and until I understood, and I, then I was reminding myself that I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. So the bad things and offenses and things that people do to me cannot affect me because I no longer live. Amen. The backbite, the stubbornness, the bad things, nothing because I no longer live. Those things don't affect to dead people. They don't finch. They're dead. Oh, Lord. If I still, you know, and then when you proclaim God's word because it's truth, because it pierces, because it's so powerful that divides between the soulish and the spiritual, discerns the intentions of the heart, when you speak it, you will get reactions. When you speak it to the world, well, they, they, get, they, they hate you or, or, or they love you and they get saved. They can't have a middle term. When you speak it to other brothers and sisters, well, they get defensive if they're moving in the soulish area because they want to defend themselves. Who <laughs> don't judge me. I'm going to say this to you, but don't judge me. You can't judge. And the other day on Facebook, I was cheeky. I have determined not to, um, if I want to declare and say something, I do my own status. But I don't go into other people's things and then comment. And you get all these other people saying bad things. So I got it a couple of times, then I, I got the, I got, yes, I got the lesson. <laughs> not doing that anymore. But I was cheeky this time. And this person was saying something about Christians shouldn't do this. And this comment was like, you fake Christians, uh, why are you judging? And then I put, but you are judging the Christians. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I didn't. And then after I said that, then I got this, you know, like, oh. I know I'm going to get all this. <laughs> but you know what? I didn't. Because at the same time, I thought, you know what? It doesn't matter if I get, if I get it. Sometimes we have to say to yeah, people, yeah. you think you're super righteous, don't want to judge, but actually you're judging them. I didn't tell them I'm a, I'm a Christian. I said, and you are judging the Christians. <laughs> Cheeky. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Talking about judging, Psalm 149, and I'm going to finish with this, if the Lord lets me, because I'm the authority. Psalm 149, verse 5 to 9. Oh, we fixed the pulpit. Mm. There's a little table for the water. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. How many of you sing aloud on your beds? Danny Mel does it. <laughs> Very loud. And Celeste. And ha well, let's not stop there. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their heart. What's, what's the edge sword? The two-edged sword? What is it? God's word. To execute vengeance on the nation and punishment on the peoples. To bind their kings and chains and their nobles with feathers of iron. To execute on them the written judgment. This honor have all his saints. Praise the Lord. Look at that. 
to execute on them the written judgment. This is the written judgment. Don't judge me. I'm not judging you. The word already judges you. The word judges our hearts, our intentions, and our actions. It is already written here. And actually, it'll be good if people judge us. Because if they judge me, it's good. So I can fix my heart right here when I got opportunity. And no wait and face those people who are so proud that say, God only can judge me. What is that person that said? Somebody made that comment. God, aren't you scared about that? That doesn't scare that? That this thing doesn't scare you? That God will judge you? Sorry? Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, there's many people who have said it. Some people have tattooed it in, the, in them. A tattoo that says, what's the list? Only God can judge me. She does the voice and everything. <laughs> Gosh, that should scare you. If only God can judge you, it'll be too late at the judgment seat of Christ. Too late. The white throne. Oh, Lord. I don't want to be judged by God. But Lord, thank you for brothers and sisters in Christ who can help each other. And, and yes, please judge me. Not with your self-righteousness, but with God's word. No, with the spirit. The fact is the intention that comes from judging other people. Do you do it so you can prove you are more righteous? Do you do it because you despise the person and you want to prove them wrong? Or do you do it because you love the person and you want them and you know what you've gone through? You know how merciful God was the Lord. Otherwise, you wouldn't have gone to hell. Yet God forgave you. And that is the reason we do the judgment. That's why Pastor Steve, with such boldness, stands in the pulpit and talks about the LGB uh, community. That without Christ, if they don't repent, they will go to hell. Because the Bible says it. It's written here. In morals, adulterers. They will not. Yes. Punishments on the people to bind their kings with chains. How do you bind kings with chains? People on authority will tell you to do something that is contrary to God's word. But when you speak God's word, you will actually in the spirit bind them and they will have no power over you. Because you have the judgment of God. There's one more that I want to read. Isaiah 54, verse 17. No weapon formed against me. Formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Why do I have the authority to condemn these judgments and things that rise against me? Because my righteousness is from the Lord. It's not my righteousness, it's his righteousness. And what do I condemn? Do I condemn the people who tell those things about me? We condemn the words that have been spoken against us, which are curses, which have power over us if we don't break them in the name of Jesus. So we condemn that, but we bless our enemies and we pray for our enemies. But the words that they speak, we condemn them. That is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Are you a servant of the Lord? Do you serve the king of kings? Do you do what he tells you? 
then your inheritance, that's your, that's your heritage. You can do that. They can speak all bad about you. They can publicly put it everywhere on Facebook and tag you. But we condemn the words and we bless the people. In the name of Jesus, we hate sin. We hate the spirit of the LGBT. LGBT <laughs> We, we hate it. We hate uh, the spirit of Islam. We hate all, all religions, but we love the people and we bless the people. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And I'm going to finish now with proclamations because we, have, we haven't given yet and we're going to give. Amen. Amen. But we're not just going to give, we are going to proclaim. Because I'm just don't give because I give, I proclaim God's word. Amen. Because by faith, I'm putting to work what he says. And what he said is, and look, I didn't put the reference here. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Will be put into your bosom. Now think about this. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure. He's going to give you a good measure. It's going to be pressed down. I never understood this, but today I understood it. Press down. When you got a, a jar and you want to put stuff and you want to fill it up more, more stuff, what do you do? You press it down. When your bin is really full and you need one more bag to put in there, <laughs> you press it down to put more. That's what the Lord does. Press down, shaken together. Now, trying to put uh, things that they're little, you shake it so it fills every little space. Shaken together <laughs> and running over. Even though he pushes it, he just shakes it. It's still running over. Will be put into your bosom. If you give, it will be given unto me.